is it's got three different formats because it depends on which angle that you are looking at how you're going to solve this. So I'm just going to focus on just angle A, which is the very first little iteration of this formula. So if I know angle A, or if I need to find angle A, it is across from side A in this triangle. If you look at the formula, they're all kind of a similar setup in terms of what's going on. The letters change, but the side is across from the angle of the same name in your law of cosines. Law of cosines is always going to use a cosine. So one way you could set this up is if you're finding side A, it's going to be the angle across from it that's involved in the formula. And I'm not, again, I know this looks really complicated. This is the same formula, just looking at different angles. So if you were looking at angle B, then you have side B by itself here. And then if you're looking at angle C, you're going to look at side C is going to be by itself. Now, what I do with this, and I know this is weird, and it'll be better when I actually get down to the bottom and get a picture for you, but the pattern to this is what I want you to write down just real quick underneath here because this is just how I set it up. And it might not be labeled with A, B, and C, but it follows this general formula. Okay, so I'm going to talk about a side right here, and it says across from the angle. So you have to either know the angle or be asked the angle. The side across from that, you are going to square whatever that number is, and it's by itself. Then you have an equal sign. This is going to follow the same format as these lovely little information pieces above here. So these two sides, I don't know why I just wrote sides. You're going to do side squared, side squared. The two sides that are on this side of the equation are around the angle. And I will show you this in a picture, and I think it'll make a little bit more sense. And then minus 2, part of the formula. Do you see a 2 in all of these up here? And then it's just the side times the side. And then both of these sides, same set of sides that I'm using here, are there around the angle. And then this is just multiplied by the cosine of the angle that I'm talking about here. So it is the side that's across from the angle that you're looking at squared by itself and then equals the two sides around the angle and then minus two times each of the sides around the angle and then the cosine of the angle. I understand that looks very complicated. I promise if we actually put, a, put it together, it's not bad and you can type almost the whole thing into the calculator. The time you want to use the law of cosines if you have two sides and the angle between them. Or if you don't have any angles, if you have all three sides and they don't give you any angles, that's when you want to use the law of cosines. Obviously, we did the law of sines yesterday. That formula was way less complicated. If you want to do law of sines, good rule of thumb for that is you have two angles or you know one angle and they ask for an angle. If you've got two angles, or if you have one angle and they ask for an angle, use the law of sines because it's a whole lot less complicated than that formula. But for law of cosines, which are going to be all the questions today you have to use it for, you have two sides and only one angle, no other angle that they're asking for. Or if you just have all three sides and no angles, it has to be the law of cosines. All right, now, here is a little example with some numbers, and it has... This lovely scenario attached to it. It says a racing committee wants to lay out a triangular course with a 40 degree angle between two sides, and those are three and a half miles and two and a half miles. What will the length of the third side need to be? We're going to round to the nearest tenth. So if we're finding a side, just like we've been doing nearest tenth, if we find an angle, nearest whole number. Now, I like to call these like a side angle side. Because what you have there is you have two sides and you have the angle between them. And so that's what I like to think about when I'm thinking about the law of cosines. Is I've got two sides and the angle between them. Or maybe I've got two sides and I need to find the angle between them. But we're going to start with the side first. Okay, here's the deal. This is how this works. This side over here by itself, all alone, 
is the side of the equation. Let me pull that down so you guys can see it. This is the one by itself. So the A would be squared. Now, the two sides around the angle, doesn't matter which one goes first or second, we're going to use the 3.5 and, and the 2.5. And so, I'm going to write 3.5 squared, doesn't matter which one goes first, plus 2.5 squared. Those are the two sides that surround that angle. And then minus 2 is part of the formula. And then I'm going to use the, two, the same two sides again. I'm just going to put parentheses so you can see that I'm multiplying. So, one of the sides is 3.5, the other side is 2.5. And then it's going to be cosine of the angle, which in that picture is 40 degrees. All right, now this is where you're going to want to grab your calculator. All that mess is equal to the side that we want squared. You can do this in one step on your calculator. If I'm equal to a squared, don't worry about this for a second. If I'm equal to a squared, what would I need to do to find a? Like, if I just want A by itself, what would I eventually have to do to this? Square root. Okay, so all I'm going to do, you could do this right from the beginning of the problem if you want to. And you can type this whole thing right in one step. So I just start out, and I'm just going to grab my calculator. And I'm just going to find my square root button, wherever that's at for you. To, for me, I have to hit a second and another button. And then I'm just going to go with this complicated side. So it's the two sides that are around the angle. So one of them was 3 and a half. I'm going to square that. Plus the other side around the angle, which was 2 and a half. I'm going to square that. And then minus 2 times both of those sides again, but just not squared. So 3.5, 2.5. Just multiplying in between. And then multiply that by the cosine of whatever the angle was. If you look back at the diagram, the angle there was 40 degrees. So I put the 40. And I had somebody's calculator. Most of the time you don't need to close the parenthesis here, but if it gives you an error message, I had somebody this morning that just needed to close the parenthesis on that. So if you get an error message, you might just need to close the parenthesis after the 40. But you should just be able to hit equals, and it will give you the whole thing in just that one step. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it again just real quick. So this is equal to a side squared based on that formula. I want just the side, so I just started out by doing the square root. Just see if you guys, try and type this on your calculator, see if you get the same thing. So it'd be 3.5 squared, 2.5 squared, minus 2 times those two sides. One of them's 3.5, one of them's 2.5, and, and then cosine of the angle. And then I should just be able to hit equals, and I'm going to round this to the nearest tenth. So I'm going to say this is about 2.3, and we're talking about miles for this if you want to give it a label. All right, so go through, see if you can, is anybody having trouble typing that on the calculator? All right, Okay, let me try one more with you until you guys, once you guys get kind of the hang of the pattern of this, it's not hard. All right, so just at the top of the page, I literally just have the formula again. So it's three different things, depending on which angle you're looking at. I really would encourage you to just think about this, what I was talking about, like the side squared and the side angle side. So I'm going to draw a picture for this one. So it says we have two stars, so I'm just going to draw star and another star and it says they're nine and a half and 4.8 light years from earth a light year is a measurement when an astronomer observes the stars with the earth as the vertex the angle between them is 43 degrees okay so i'm sure this is not drawn to scale or anything but let's say this is the earth all right i'm going to make a little triangle here with these two stars and I'm sure I did not draw that to scale at all. Okay, so it says one of them is nine and a half light years. That would just be a distance. The other one, this is definitely not drawn to scale, is 4.8. So I'm getting two sides here. And if I'm standing on the earth and looking at these two stars, it's saying the angle between them is 43 degrees. So the 43 go right here. And we're going to find <coughs> the distance between the two stars. 
out in space. So we're going to find that's going to be our variable. So here is my side angle side. I've got two sides and the angle between them. That makes up the complicated side of that lovely law of cosines. The plane x, that's what we're going to solve for. That's by itself because it's by itself across the triangle from all the other information. So to do that, the side by itself, you're going to square it. Totally doesn't matter the order, but the two sides that go around the angle, we're going to take both of those. One of them's 4.8. We're going to square them, and you just add in between. It's, it follows the same pattern if you're looking at this formula up here above. And then I'd have 9.5 squared. So the two sides just around the angle. And then minus 2 is part of the formula. You'll see that in every one of those examples right above the, of the problem here. And then you just use those same two sides. So the 4.8 and the 9.5. And then it's the cosine of the angle between them, which is the 43. And this is equal to the side we want, but it's squared. So just if you want to do it all in one step, you totally can. I just have to remember I'd have to take the square root. So I just start out and I take the square root at the beginning, and you can type that whole complicated side right into your calculator. So try to do that. Make sure we're getting the same thing. So you just find your square root button. I have to hit second and then the x squared key to do it. I'm going to do 4.8. We're going to square that. Plus 9.5. We're going to square that. And then just minus 2 times 4.8 times 9.5 times cosine 43. I know that's a lot, but you could type it all right in at once. See what you guys get. Hopefully it's what I, I got about 6.8. That would be my missing side there. So that would be the distance. So this would be light years for this question. If you want to do a label, if you can get to the 6.8, that's fine with me. I'm not going to be picky about a label, but that would be the distance between those two stars. Is anybody having a question or not getting that? Okay, now, very similar to the law of sines. The law of cosines, if you have to find an angle, it's a little bit different. So I'm going to draw you a picture here, and we're going to find a missing angle. So it says the lengths of the sides of a triangle, 10, 14, 15. So not to scale, I'm just going to sketch a triangle. Just call one of your sides 10, one of your sides 14, one of your sides 15. doesn't matter which one's which, we're just using this as a reference says, find the measure of the angle opposite the longest side. So out of those, which one would be the longest side? The 15. All right, so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to put an X here, like X degrees. I don't know that. So you're looking for your side angle side. So I have two sides around that angle. We're going to find the angle here. That's going to make up the complicated side of the equation. The 15 is across the triangle, so that's just going to be by itself on that one side of that equal sign. All right, so I'm just going to do the 15 squared. It's by itself. It's across from the angle we're trying to figure out. So we already know this side length. And then the two sides that go around the angle, those are the ones on the other side. So it doesn't matter the order. I'm going to write 10 squared, 14 squared, minus 2 times those two sides, so 10 and 14. And then cosine here. Now, I don't know the angle measure, so we're going to have just a variable there. If I just used x in my picture. You can use whatever variable you want. Okay, now, I do this in a couple steps. So I'm actually going to simplify kind of what we have here. So 15 squared, you guys might already know that, is 225. So I figured that out. And then I'm just going to kind of show you how I break it apart. So I take these two together, because I, I have this other part, this 2, 10, and 14. That is attached to that cosine x. So I kind of do it in a couple steps. So I'm going to do 10 squared plus 14 squared. And I'm going to write that underneath. So this is 296. And then it's minus. For the other part, I'm just going to do 2 times 10 times 14. So I'm just multiplying these numbers together. This is 280 cosine x. All right, now. The biggest mistake, let me, I feel like this is really zoomed out. Hang on, let me make this a little bigger so we can read it. All right, now, the biggest mistake people will accidentally make on this kind of a question, they take these two numbers and they do like 296 minus 280. They subtract that. You cannot do that. Right here, this 280 with this little negative sign, this is attached to your cosine x with multiplication, so you cannot subtract those two numbers. What you actually want to do is you want to take that 296 and you want to move it to the other side as your first step here. 
So I'm just going to subtract the 296. If you're finding an angle, you just have to do a couple steps to keep everything straight. But don't put these two numbers together. You cannot subtract them. This is attached to that cosine with multiplication, and multiplication comes before subtraction in your order of operations. So just leave this together. So I'm going to take 225 minus 296. This can go away. Now, I don't want to say always, but almost always that will become a negative number, and that's fine. The rest of what was left over here was this negative 280 cosine x. Then you can get rid of the 280. You are multiplying that by the cosine x. So if I'm multiplying, to undo that, we're just going to divide. So I'm going to divide by this negative 280. And if you have a negative, divide by negative. It just becomes positive. So I'm going to have 71 over 280 equals cosine then just to get x alone, does anybody remember how to cancel out a cosine? What would you use to cancel out the cosine? Inverse. So all you have to do on this last step, I'm just, technically I'm taking the inverse of both sides. Over on this side, it's just the cosine and its inverse cancel each other out. So we would just be left with the angle measure. All you have to do on your calculator is just type second cosine. Anytime you're finding an angle, you got to use inverse. Just do 71 divided by 280 and that should be your angle. And we're just going to go to the nearest degree, so I'm going to say that's 75 degrees. So this is, it's a little bit more, it's a little bit more take your time if you're finding an angle, but it's not bad to do. And you're just going to have the calculator in front of you to do almost all this work. I'm going to try one more with you just to see if we can set up one more this time. Let me draw a triangle again. So I'm just going to sketch a triangle says it has sides, let's see, 9, 11, and 14. And find the measure of the angle opposite the shortest side. So which side would be the shortest? Nine. The 9. So I'm going to put the angle across from that, be like right in here. So if I'm trying to do my side angle side, that angle is in between these two sides. So the 9 is going to go by itself. I'm just going to do 9 squared. And then it doesn't matter the order. You grab the other two sides. One of them is 11. One of them is 14. We're going to square them both. We're going to add them together. And that's minus 2 times those same two sides, 11 and 14. And then cosine of the angle. All right, if I'm finding an angle, sorry, I know it's just a little bit annoying, but I'm just going to do a couple steps here. I'm going to figure out what these numbers actually are. So just grab the calculator to do that. 9 squared is 81. 11 squared plus 14 squared is 317. And then 2 times 11 times 14, that's attached to your cosine x, that's 308, and then the cosine x. Just promise, 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 do not subtract these numbers, okay? This negative 308 is attached to that cosine x with multiplication. You cannot subtract those numbers. What you actually want to do is move the 317 to the other side. It's positive, so I'm just going to subtract it. And like I was mentioning to you, most of the time when you do that, you're going to end up with a negative number. Don't think you're doing something wrong. So 81 minus 317, I'm going to get negative 236. And then I'm just going to bring down that negative 308 cosine x that was left. Then you get rid of the 308 by dividing. So you're multiplying by the cosine of x. So I'm going to divide by that negative 308 to move it to the other side. Now, when you do that, the two negatives right here, like negative divided by negative, that just becomes positive. Now, you absolutely don't, don't worry about reducing that fraction or anything like that. Just leave it right like that. That equals the cosine of the angle you're trying to find. And so all I'm going to do here is take an inverse cosine. To cancel out a cosine, you just use an inverse cosine. That's the cosine negative 1. You just hit second cosine on your lovely calculator to do this. So I'm doing second cosine. And then you just type in the 236 divided by the 308. Whoops, I'm sorry if I'm off the screen there. And to the nearest degree, I would just go ahead and round that up. This would be 40 degrees. I know this is a lot. I know this formula is really complicated. I would try to maybe kind of go with the pattern that we've been using. Like look for your side angle side. The side angle side is the complicated side of that. The other side is going to be by itself. If you're finding a side, you could type the entire thing in. If you're finding an angle, you've got to use an inverse cosine. Okay, I'm going to give you guys the rest of the time. We are going to take a quiz tomorrow over the lessons we've covered.